My name is David Melcher, and I'd like to thank everyone in the course for viewing my video, which will discuss the act of conducting business in England. Uh, before beginning the presentation, it is important to make the distinction between England and the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom consists of England, as well as Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. It is sometimes common to refer to England as the United Kingdom, yet England comprises only one of the four countries within the United Kingdom. And while each of these countries has a rich history of business tradition, this report focuses solely on the history, traditions, economic influences, business practices, as well as verbal and nonverbal communication in England. In today's global market economy, England is a leader in both the banking and financial industries. England's specialty in banking and trade finance stems from colonialism and the need to facilitate bartering of minerals and commodities from lands far away. Since the time of colonization, trade has been the most prominent factor of England's economy. Economic prosperity in England during the second half of the 17th century created a significant group of wealthy people with a growing taste for luxury products from other continents. Sailing ships and their cargoes faced many risks in bringing these goods to England, and these hazards meant that a merchant's fortune could literally disappear overnight. Business in those days was conducted very informally. A merchant with a ship to insure would ask a broker to take the risk from one wealthy merchant to another, seeking insurance cover. Each merchant would take a portion of the risk, and the broker would visit several merchants until the risk was completely covered. The broker's skill lay chiefly in ensuring that policies were underwritten only by people who could meet their share of the claim. This process was formalized by Lloyds of London and is still used in the business world today, where it has come to be known as underwriting. Among other businesses in England, HSBC Holdings was founded in 1865 and is the largest company in England as well as the biggest bank in Europe today. Other famous companies based out of England include the now defunct and since revived East India, British East India Company rather, which got its start by importing spices from the East Indies as they were known at the time. Harrods, Barclays, and Virgin Islands Airline are all well-known businesses whose corporate headquarters are located in England. And as noted earlier, England maintains a strong presence in the banking and financial industries. Formerly a very homogenous society, since World War II, England has become increasingly diverse as it has accommodated large immigrant populations, particularly from its former colonies such as India, Pakistan, and the West Indies. The government in England remains a constitutional monarchy and the class system remains in place to a certain extent. Recently, people from varied backgrounds have had greater access to higher education and wealth distribution is changing with more upward mobility occurring. However, the Brit British class system is still very much intact, although in a more subconscious way. People are identified according to class and class is no longer simply about wealth or where one lives. The English are able to identify someone's class through a number of complex variables, including demeanor, accent, and manners. The English business culture is rather formal. Many from the older generations prefer to work with people and companies they know or who are known to their associates. Younger business people do not need long-standing personal relationships before they do business with people and do not require an intermediary to make business introductions. Some of this change can be attributed to the shifting religious practices expressed in England. Regardless of religion or generation, networking and relationship building is often the key to long-term business success in England. Rank is respected and business people prefer to deal with people at their own level. If at all possible, include an elder statesman on your team as they will present the aura of authority that is necessary to good business relationships in many companies. In accordance with English business etiquette, when entering a room, allow those of a higher rank to enter first. Business gift giving is not part of the business culture in England, though inviting business colleagues out for a meal is considered proper. Most businesses are closed on Saturday and Sunday, as well as major public holidays, which are included on the next slide. England had an estimated GDP of $2.4 trillion in 2011. 
making it the world's seventh largest economy and the third largest economy in the European Union behind Germany and France. England is also considered one of the most powerful international trading companies in the world today. England's leading exports are manufactured goods, fuels, chemicals, food, beverages, and tobacco. The pound sterling, or pound, is the currency used in England. England does not use the euro, and many locations do not accept the euro as currency, though some businesses will accept them in England. England has both coins and notes for currency, a setup similar to the U.S. The following slide will illustrate each of the available currency options in England. Offering more specific data as it relates to business in England, 61% of consumers use search engines to help them in their product research decisions leading up to purchase. 75% of young people ages 18 to 26 use recommendations on social sites to help them research products prior to purchase. Interestingly, the lowest priority for consumers in England when considering purchasing a product is the price. In this segment, I will cover the topics of punctuality, dress attire, business meetings and negotiations, as well as business entertainment. Beginning with punctuality, uh, make it a point to be punctual. The English are very particular about timekeeping. Um, also to note, the English are on Greenwich Mean Time, also known as GMT. But to be late is considered inconsiderate and discourteous. This can prove to be particularly difficult in London, where traffic often moves at a very slow pace, making it important to plan ahead and to give yourself enough time to arrive at your destination on time or early. In England, there are established rules for everything, which gives a sense of stability to the lives of locals. The English are very time-oriented and may become anxious about deadlines and results. For proper attire, business attire in England is conservative with men wearing dark or medium colored conservative business suits. Men should also wear lace shoes as loafers are not considered appropriate. Men are also advised to avoid striped ties since many Brit British regimental ties are striped and yours may look like an imitation. Men are encouraged to wear shirts with no pockets, but if the shirt has pockets, they should remain empty. Women should wear either a business suit or a conservative dress. Accessories are usually worn by women and are considered appropriate business attire. Jeans and business casual attire are not typically appropriate, though this can vary depending on the industry. Uh, discussing meetings, uh, and once again, uh, it's important to stress the importance of punctuality when conducting business with English companies. Uh, the manner in which meetings are conducted is often determined by the composition of the people attending. If everyone is at the same level, there is generally a free flow of ideas and opinions. If there is a senior ranking person in the room, that person will do most of the talking. In general, meetings will be rather formal and always have a clearly defined purpose, which may include an agenda, although typically meetings start with a brief amount of small talk before getting down to the business at hand. If an agenda is prepared, be sure to forward it to your English colleagues in sufficient time for them to review it and to recommend any changes. When negotiating, some English executives stereotype you as business people as condescending. It is important to make every effort to avoid this impression, and it is also wise to avoid the hard sell or any other action that might result in conflict or confrontation. Decision making is made from the top down and is slower in England than in the U.S., so it is not wise to rush your English colleagues toward a decision. Negotiations and decisions are usually open and flexible, and English counterparts tend to favor a win-win approach. Also, as a token of respect, allow English executives to suggest that a meeting has finished and never prolong your exit. As far as entertainment, business breakfasts and hotels are becoming common and are starting to shift to a more streamlined continental style. Lunch is generally between noon and 2 p.m. and usually takes place casually with a light meal in a pub. If senior executives are present, lunch will likely be eaten in the best restaurants or in the executive dining room. Dinner is generally from 7 to 11 p.m. in most restaurants. In a pub, never miss your turn to shout for a round or to buy everyone in your party a drink, in other words. If going out after hours, do not bring up the subject of work unless your British associates do. 
It is also improper to invite a business associate out until you know him or her fairly well. If you are the guest of English business associates, you must initiate your departure. Your host will not indicate that they wish the evening to come to an end. American executives doing business in England are placed in the peculiar position of speaking a common language but meaning things that are entirely different from the English interpretation. Say you want to table a meeting. A British, British executive will think you want to begin the discussion rather than postpone it. Bring, bringing your English English up to speed before doing business there can save you many misunderstandings. Confusion can occur between cultures when words take on different meanings. So it is important to be aware of this in order to avoid any embarrassing misunderstandings. Britain refers to the island on which England, Wales, and Scotland are located. Although the English are in the habit of referring to all natives of Britain as Brits, this term is not appreciated by many Welsh, Irish, and Scots. And although UK countries are members of the European Union, the British do not consider themselves European. This is important to remember when discussing issues regarding the European Union. First names are used almost immediately with all colleagues, with exceptions for very senior managers. However, you should always wait to be invited to use first names before doing so yourself. Only medical doctors and the clergy use their professional or academic titles in business in England. Most people use the courtesy titles of Mr., Mrs., or Ms. and their surname. In England, one's private life is just that. Do not try to interrogate your English colleagues with personal questions while working. Even asking where someone is from may appear intrusive and can make a foreign business person look a bit desperate for conversation. The English have an interesting mix of communication styles encompassing both understatement and direct communication. Many older business people or those from the upper class rely heavily upon formal use of established protocol. The English are masters of understatement and do not use effusive language. A vital element in all aspects of British life and culture is the renowned English sense of humor. The importance of humor in all situations, including business contexts, cannot be overestimated. Humor is frequently used as a defense mechanism, often in the form of self-depreciation or irony. It can be highly implicit and in this sense is related to the British indirect communication style. Written communication should also be covered and it follows the strict rules of protocol in England. How a letter is closed varies depending on how well the writer knows the recipient. Written communication is always addressed using the person's title and their surname. First names are not generally used in written communication unless you know the person well. Email is now much more widespread. However, the communication style remains more formal, at least initially, than in many other countries. The English will not use slang or abbreviations and will think negatively if your communication appears overly familiar. Concerning nonverbal communication, the stiff upper lip is a term often used to describe the traditionally English portrayal of reserve and restraint when faced with difficult situations. In English culture, open displays of emotion, positive or negative, are rare and should be avoided. During meetings, this means your English colleagues will approach business with an air of formality and detachment. The English are also a bit more contained in their body language and hand gestures while speaking. They are generally more distant and reserved than North and South Americans and Southern Europeans, and may not initially appear to be as open or friendly. A firm handshake is the norm, and there are no issues over gender in this regard in England. People shake hands upon meeting and leaving. It is important to maintain eye contact during the greeting, but to avoid anything prolonged. It is also important to respect one's personal space. The English value their space and keeping an acceptable distance is advised. Business cards are exchanged at the initial introduction without formal ritual. The business card may be put away with only a cursory glance, so don't be offended if not much attention is paid to it. This concludes my cultural presentation on England. I hope you found the presentation to be informative and I thank all of you for taking the time to view it and I look forward to viewing everyone's presentation in the coming week.